Hey guys, Taufik here. Now in this video, I will be solving an SQL problem that was shared to me by one of my subscribers. Now I have seen a similar problem floating around on LinkedIn and I believe this was a problem that was asked by a fan company during an SQL interview. And I believe if you're planning to attend an SQL interview, you should definitely check out this video because you can expect similar SQL problems during any of the SQL interviews. Now, before I can start, I would like to mention that all the scripts, data sets and SQL queries that I will be using in this video, I will be sharing them in my blog. You can download it from my blog for free. The link to my blog is there in the video description. And also in my video description, you will see some recommended courses that I would recommend for learning SQL, Python as well as Power BI. So definitely check out my video description. Okay, so let's look at the problem that we will be solving in today's video. So the problem statement basically states, we need to ungroup the given travel items data. So looks like there is an input that is given to us and we need to write a query which is going to derive this input and it's going to display the output which would be something like this. Okay. Now the input table basically looks like it's a data about a person who's gone for a travel and all the items that he has taken with him. Okay. So here we have an ID column and the next column is all the items that the traveler has taken and how many of these items he has taken. So we can see that the traveler has taken two water bottles, one tent and four apples. Now for each of these items, we need to repeat the records based on the count that is given in this particular column. Okay, so the reason why this problem is called as ungroup the data is because if I had this kind of data, so let's say if this was my input and if I had grouped the data based on this particular column, then I would get three records and if I did a count of one, then this is the count that I would get right so if i had gone from my output to input then just by doing a group by of this column i would get a data something like this but here the problem is basically reversal of that uh, that is why it is called like ungrouping of the given data so we have this data here now from this data we need to kind of like split this data into multiple records as shown here Okay, now in order to solve this problem, I will be using PostgreSQL and I have already created the table as you can see here. This is basically having the same data as shown in the input here. Now, whenever you need to solve an SQL problem, the very first thing that you need to ask is once you have understood the problem statement and once you have understood the input data and once you know what the expected output is, the first thing that you need to ask is what are the different concepts in SQL you will need to use in order to solve this problem. Okay, so in this particular case, the first thing that I need to understand is I basically need to write a query which is going to process these records multiple times based on the count that is mentioned here, right? In other words, I need to recursively process the records in this table based on the count that is given here. So straight away, I can tell that one of the ways of solving this problem is by using recursive SQL queries right so we'll try to solve this problem using a recursion of course we can solve it by using many other methods as well if any of you watching this video you have a different solution to this definitely share them in the comments below okay so we'll try to solve it using a recursion now before i can solve this problem first of all i'm going to tell you what is the syntax for recursion so in postgresql if i had to use recursion i need to use this uh, with clause that is the cte table and i need to mention this keyword that is recursive and then I need to give my with clause name. So let's say I'm just going to call it like CTE. Okay. And here I basically need to have two different queries. So the first query is my base query. And then I need to have my union clause. Okay. And then the next one is basically the recursive uh, part of the, or I can just tell a recursive uh, query. Okay. So once I have both of this, then in my main query, I can just query the data from my uh, CTE table. That is uh, from CTE, right? So this is kind of like the template of how to write a recursive SQL query. And the same syntax will also work in uh, all the major RDBMS like Oracle, uh, Microsoft SQL Server and MySQL, uh, except for in Oracle and Microsoft SQL Server, there are slight changes in the syntax. So uh, once you have watched this video, in, if you want a solution in other RDBMS, you will find a solution in my blog. Okay, now let's try to solve this problem. So the first thing is we need to identify what is our base query here. Now, when I say base query, it basically means the data that will be returned from the first iteration, right? How this recursive SQL query will get executed is first the base query gets executed. That is in the first iteration. In the second iteration, the output from the first iteration will be used by using this 
particular name that is CTE. Okay. In the third iteration, the output from the second iteration will be used. In the fourth iteration, the output from the third iteration will be used and so on and so forth. Right. So in order for us to write the recursive SQL query, first we need something like an input data or kind of like the initial data that the SQL needs to use. And then over that, it's going to recursively run the query again and again. So straight away, I can tell that my base query should basically return all the data from this input table right because if you see here i have one record for water bottle tent and apple and i already have one of those records here right additionally the records may repeat based on the count that is mentioned here right so first of all the data that is already present in the input table i definitely need to provide it in my output right so i can just do this just a select star from this entire table can be treated like my base query okay so instead of using a star i'll just mention the column names so I'm just going to say ID item name comma total count. Okay. So I'm going to have that. And just to understand what is the data that I'll be getting from each iteration, I'll just use an hard coded value and I'm going to name it like, let's say level. Okay. So I'll just mention that here. Now, if I just execute this base query, I'm just getting the same input data. And here I have just hard coded the level as one. Okay. I'll increment this level in the second part. Okay. So this is my base query. The next thing is to write the recursive part of the query. The rule is in the recursive part of the query, I will need to use this CTE table. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say select. Okay. From. Okay. First of all, I definitely need to use the CTE table because that is the only way how I can make this query recursive. Right. Secondly, I kind of need to use this travel items table again because from this travel items table, I need to know what is the total count and based on that, I need to run my recursion, right? So what I'm going to do is this CT is going to return whatever was written from the previous iteration. Okay. And then I'm going to join it with the input table that is travel items here. Okay. And I'm going to join these two tables based on the item name. Okay. I can join it based on item name and ID. For now, maybe I'll just join it uh, based on the item name. Okay. So I'll give an alias here, let's say T. Okay. And I'll just tell T dot item name equal to CTE dot item name. Okay. And to just make it more clear, I'll also join it based on the ID. Okay. So I'll just copy the same thing and I'll join it based on the ID. I'll put the ID here. I'll put the ID here. Okay. And that is fine. So this CT will return whatever was written from the previous iteration. This travel items is having the input data. Now I need to put a condition such that my iteration only works based on this total count. I will come to that. But before that, I'll just mention what I need to uh, display from this particular query. Okay. So first of all, I'll just copy all of these columns because it's a union. So all the columns in these two queries should be the same, but I'm going to fetch all of these values, uh, let's say from my CTE table. Okay. So CTE dot ID and CTE dot item name, the total count and this level here, what I'll do is I'll just say level plus one. Okay. And I'll just put this inside the parenthesis. And this is going to be my level. Okay. Uh, so for every iteration, this level is going to increase. Okay. So we come to know uh, from each, which iteration we have got what data, right? That is the purpose. So I have joined these two tables, but I have not done the most important thing. The most important thing is I need to provide a termination condition. I need to tell SQL how many times this iteration needs to happen. If I don't give a termination condition, then this query will get executed infinite number of times. Right. So in order to give a termination condition, I'm going to use a filter condition here. But before that, I need to do one important thing. The thing is from the first iteration, I will get whatever input data that I have from my travel items table. When it comes to the second iteration, I want to reduce the total count. So once the data is already uh, printed next time, when it is going to print, I want to reduce this total count by one. So in each iteration, I will try to count. I will try to reduce the count by one. At one stage, finally, this count is going to be zero. And once it is zero, I no longer want to continue with the recursion. Okay. So that is my logic. So what I'll do is I'll just put a minus one here. Okay. So in the first iteration for water bottle, I'll have two. In the second iteration, when I'll get the output from this query, this water bottle will get the total count as two minus one. That is one. In the third iteration, it will be one minus one zero. And I will put a termination condition such that uh, I will execute this query only when it is, let's say greater than zero or something like that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say CTE dot total count is greater than let's say zero. Okay. And I think that's all. 
and here I'm just going to print all the data from the CTE. Now let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm just going to execute this. I have executed this and you can see that I have got some data. So I'm just going to move this to the top and I think so water bottle is printed three times. Apple has been printed, I think five times. Tent has printed twice. Okay, but I think the number of prints are actually more than what I need. Now let's try to fix that. But before that, let's try to sort this data in a more uh, meaningful way. So I'm just going to say order by let's say ID. Okay, so I'll just run this query now. And now you can see that water bottle is printed thrice, tent twice and Apple uh, five times. Right now to even better understand this, let's try to sort this data based on the level. So we know that from each iteration, what was the data that was written? Okay, so I'll run this. Now you can see here when the query executed for the first iteration, that is basically the data from the base query. I got these three records here. The total count is two, one and four. That is exactly what we have in the input data, right? And then when it went to the second level, okay, so that is when the data got returned from the second iteration, that is these three records, you can see here water bottle count reduced by one, tent count reduced by one, so one minus one zero, and Apple also four minus one is three, that is what it got returned here, okay? And then when it went to the third iteration, you can see that only water bottle and Apple got returned because tent became zero, I think zero minus one is minus one, but here I have a termination condition that I need to fetch only the data where it is greater than zero. Right. So that is why this one did not get returned here. Okay. But you might ask, why is it I'm getting this uh, tent equal to zero still getting returned? Okay. The reason is if you look here in the first iteration, uh, the tent was having the total count as one. So that got displayed from the base query. When it came to the second iteration, uh, tent here, this particular query got executed. Okay. Here the tent was reduced from one minus one that it is zero. So here it is still printing the tent but in the next iteration this filter condition gets applied okay so when tent is zero it still gets printed because of our filter condition here if i had put uh, where total count is greater than one then probably i should not be getting this record then probably i should get, be getting the correct expected output okay so what i'm going to do here is uh, okay but before that you have understood what data got returned from the second iteration and in the third iteration only two of the items got returned water bottle it became zero here because in the previous iterations uh, i did minus one twice so two minus two got zero so here it is zero so in the next iteration because because it is zero here in the next iteration you can see that a water bottle is not showing up okay but apple shows up once here in the fourth iteration and in the fifth iteration you can see apple also became zero and after that there was no sixth iteration now you can see that water bottle is repeated thrice, apple is repeated five times, but that is not what I want, right? I want it to return apple four times and water bottle twice and tent only once, okay? And the reason why it's returning all of this one extra time is because I have put a filter condition here to check total count greater than zero. But let's say if I put total count greater than one and if I execute this, okay? Now I think my data is right. Just to make it more clear, I'll just fetch the column that I actually need. That is ID and item name. Okay. And let's say I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to be using this level here. And let's say just I'm going to execute this. Okay. And here you can see that I have got the output exactly like how I want it. So I have water bottle twice, tent once and apple four times. Okay. So this is exactly what I wanted as you can see here. Okay. So this is the way how I have solved this. I hope this is clear. This same solution will also work in MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server and in Oracle. I think in Oracle you need to add a special condition to handle the cycle. Okay. I have the solution for that and I will be sharing them in my blog. Okay. I hope you found this video useful. And I hope you understood this. If you are not sure about recursive SQL queries, I have made a detailed tutorial video about recursive SQL queries. I'll leave the link to that video somewhere here. You can check that out. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for watching and see you soon in the next one. Bye.